All right, Garrett Johnson here. I'm joined by Charlie Wee, who is now on the Champions Tour. It's a rookie on the PGA Tour Champions. How does that feel? Ah, feels good and bad. Feels bad that I'm getting older, but feels good to be out here with all the guys that I competed against on the PGA Tour and um, to uh, compete again. It's been a lot of fun. Well, anything surprise you so far in, in this first calendar year? I know you made it to the playoffs thus far, but any surprises? Um, the surprise surprising part is that how competitive everyone is still. Um, I know I competed with most of the guys out here on the PGA Tour and they still play really good out here and you know it really motivation to work hard and and um, and to compete because um, you know you don't want to lose to these guys you know you competed against them all your life so. When you've been competing recently three top 12s in the last four starts I mean wh what's been working recently what have you found? Um, I struggled with my putting for a few years uh, at latter part of my career on the PJ Tour, and I started putting with my arm lock putter, and uh, I think that's really helped me a lot. And I'm still getting used to uh, uh, with the arm lock putter, but you know, I asked some, you know, Steve Flesh about how he does it. So I've asked a lot of questions to other players, and they've been helping me how to uh, adopt to new way to putt with the arm lock, and um, yeah, it's been really helpful. It's interesting that you talk about talking with other players and, and saying, hey, what works for you, arm lock putter with flesh. Is it a little different in that sense versus the regular tour in terms of just working with other guys just kind of casually for fun, just helping each other out? I don't think so. Even on the PJ Tour, um, you know, there's a few guys out here that, you know, I've had dinners with many times like Steve Flesh, Chris DeMarco, Tim Heron, Y.E. Yang, K.J. Choi. So, you know, a lot of these guys I know and they've been very open to helping you even here or on the PGA Tour, so you know nothing's. I I, I don't think nothing's really changed in that as aspect. Well, I think of somebody like Kevin Na, who I spoke with a little bit earlier, and said, "Hey, you know what? What is it about Charlie that impresses you over the years?" And he said that your swing, you've been able to just kind of reinvent your swing a lot of times. And what do you attribute that to? Well, I, I knew that most important thing is impact, and you know I've had really good coaches throughout my career, but there were some questions that were not answered and I in 2005 my rookie year I used to play a lot of practice rounds with Steve Elkington and at that time he was working with um, Andy Plummer and Mike Bennett also known as Stack and Tilt and Steve Elkington goes hey mate you got to go see these guys they know what they're talking about <laughs> and you know I I went to them in August of uh, 2005 at the Travelers Championship and I told them hey I got myself here I'm going to empty my cup, so tell me everything. And, you know, that's when my game started elevating and getting better. I was able to understand my swing better. And, you know, being out on the PG Tour, the, you know, on the weekends, the greens get firm, and they start tucking the pins. So if you don't know how to control your golf ball, it gets really difficult. Uh, so that I knew that if I didn't make the changes, I, you know, I'll be a just one-time flash. So I made the necessary change to be able to stay out on the Tour for a long time. Well, you mentioned uh, having tough pins on Sundays. I think about when you were in the final round at Pebble Beach 2012 at the AT&T. You were in that last group. And I know Phil and Tiger were playing together and everybody was keeping an eye on them and stuff. But what does that feel like as a competitor when you know everyone is looking at those guys? I know I'm the leader, so I'm going to be on camera quite a bit. But what does that feel like, the energy out there, and how do you manage as a competitor? Well, you know, Tiger's Tiger and Phil's Phil, and they definitely are good for the tour. Uh, they draw a lot of people, and they were – uh, group right in front of me and it was, it was a bit distracting because there are a lot of people following them and there you know there's a lot of people moving around but you know when you, if you want to compete on the PG tour and play with the best you know you have to adapt to a lot of those things yeah. well, speaking of adapting you've mentioned in the past that it's very um, challenging when you're not playing well on the PGA Tour, right? That is very, uh, I'm trying to think of the exact word it was, but you says you put pressure on yourself when you're not playing well, but then when you are playing well, you put other pressure on yourself to sustain that. Yeah. So how, how, did you, how do you manage that uh, at that level? Well, that's a very good question. I'm still trying to uh, learn myself. Right. Um, but I think, you know, to compete at the highest level in any sport, you have to learn how to embrace stress and pressure because if you can't do that, I think that you won't be out here for a long time. And especially golf, you know, it's up to you. You know, they say they talk about between your ears, and it really is. And it's how you cope with your pressure and the stress that, that finishes on top. And I believe 
you know, Tiger was so mentally strong because he knew exactly how to handle himself inside under pressure. And I believe that when players fold and, you know, not do well under pressure is because they don't know how to handle themselves in those situations. Well, speaking of handle yourself in situations, uh, we saw what Freddie Couples did shooting 60 last week on this tour. What did you make from, from a guy at 63 to be able to pull that off? Yeah, I, uh, I haven't seen Freddie in a long time because he, you know, he hasn't played the tour for a while. But, you know, I s got to see him hit some balls at um, Canadian Open. Or, I'm sorry, the Shaw Classic. And, and it still looked beautiful. Still had just effortless or yeah, just what? St still had great rhythm, great speed, and just he just makes everything look so easy. And I was like so impressed, and you know it's very envious. What other uh, friendships or, or or players have impressed you and, and or had a chance to spend time with over here on the, on the PGA Tour Champions? Well, you know when I played my first event in Dallas, everybody was so friendly. Everybody came up saying welcome to the tour, and you know it's been like I had you know I hadn't seen them in a long time but I, I haven't missed a beat you know they're everybody here out here is so friendly and want to talk to you and wish you well and yeah it's been really really nice to get to see all these guys again well I know you have some roots in LA went to high school in Thousand Oaks area I'd imagine LA Dodgers, San Diego Padres must have been something you were like, oh boy. Like, I, I'd imagine on the Dodgers side, right? Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a tough topic. My son, who plays baseball, he's 12 years old, and we love the Dodgers, and when we lost, we were just crushed. And I, I'm definitely a big Dodger fan, and I know a lot of guys on the uh, LA Dodgers play golf, so, you know, I was very disappointed that they lost. They had such a great season, and that's what's so great about baseball, you know. And I hope uh, I wish the Padres well because they're still a National League West team. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you like the West, obviously. When, now you mentioned other players there uh, on the team there, the baseball team that play golf. What's a favorite memory so far with one of the Dodgers playing out on the golf course? Well, I don't know the current Dodger, but I uh, have a friend named Mike Lieberthal who played for the Phillies for a long time. We went to high school together, and he finished his career as a Dodger. And um, it was myself, Mike Lieberthal, and Matt Franco, who also went to our high school. He played for the Mets for a long time. And on the 11th hole at TPC Valencia, I made a hole in one in front of them. So I guess that's pretty memorable. It's <laughs> not too bad, right? Yeah. So that was fun. And they're really good guys and really good golfers and good friends. Well, we think about California, and I, I'm from there as well, Sacramento, Nor Northern California. And cold weather, though, is being the opposite where we are here in Virginia now. And you were talking about that at the beginning, before we started, that cold weather, what do you do? What would be your advice to weekend golfers, weekend hacks at home, how we can deal with colder weather when we're playing on the weekend? Well, you know, if it's cold, you know, in L.A., we wouldn't go outside. <laughs> okay. So I guess that would be my advice. Stay home. Wow. Uh, I mean, you'll get plenty of good weather in L.A., but, uh, you know, just – Got to dress warm and get the, what is that, heat pack that gets on your body? I, I guess wear that. <laughs> I'm not, I'm sorry. I'm, I don't really have a good answer for that. Yeah, well, I wouldn't expect. I mean, obviously, you know, hand warmers, there's so many things that yeah, we can yeah. try to offset the cold with. Um, now, I'm curious, though, like when you get to the range, and I've seen you on the range a little bit this week, for fans at home, what's a good way to to spend your time most efficiently on the range? I know it's easy for us to just kind of fritter away 20 minutes, but what would be the best way to, to spend that time? Well, it depends what kind of player, player you are. I think that as we get older, we lose speed. I think that it's important that we constantly work on speed, making sure that our arms are moving really fast. I think there's a misconception that, um, you know, we have to move our body fast to get, the, get more club at speed, but in reality, we have to be able to swing our arms and the body together so we could maximize our power. And I think that uh, most of the players, they don't move their arms fast enough. So uh, I believe that just getting the arms moving fast is going to really help you. So swinging with a, uh, like even a alignment stick to get the arms moving faster, that's going to help you understand how to coordinate the arms to the body, and that could really help your game. Well, hey, appreciate you taking some time here on the podcast, Charlie, and we'll, uh, we'll catch up again soon. All right. Thank you, Garrett. Appreciate it.